Well, I can tell you that that news conference is going to get underway here momentarily. So uh, let's go ahead and go ahead and take it. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Ryan Huff. That's spelled R-Y-A-N. Last name is H-U-F-F, as in Frank Frank. And I'm the uh, chief spokesperson for the CU Boulder campus. I'm also joined today by Scott Pribble. He is the public information officer for the CU Boulder Police Department. Uh, common spelling on Scott, two T's. Uh, Pribble is P-R-I-B-B-L-E. Uh, so I want to just le let you know right now the campus is safe. There are uh, no longer any threats here. Uh, the police are still on scene investigating this incident. Um, it's business as usual. We have classes uh, still going on, uh, business operations. Uh, everything on campus is normal operations with the exception of the Champion Center. Uh, we still have a lot of uh, law enforcement personnel there. They will be there the rest of the day, so uh, we would ask everybody to avoid the Champion Center area uh, for the rest of the day. So at 9.15 this morning, there was a 911 call uh, from the Champion Center. The report was a man who was uh, menacing with a machete. Uh, part of our campus protocols when we have an emergency like that is to immediately uh, text the entire campus through our text system to uh, all students, faculty, and staff. We asked everyone to take uh, protective actions at that time. And by 9.40, uh, we had the all clear um, that there was no longer a threat at the Champion Center. Scott will tell you more about that incident. Uh, but just on behalf of the campus, I want to thank the CU Police Department and the Boulder Police Department for their quick action in resolving this situation and ensuring that, uh, that, that no one was harmed here uh, on the campus uh, with the ex exception of the suspect. Um, I will uh, turn it over to Scott Pribble for more information about the incident. Good morning, everybody. I just want to uh, tell you some of the details. I, I will tell you, though, that this is an evolving situation. Um, the investigation is just now getting started, and so we don't have a lot of firm details. But what we know so far is, as Ryan indicated, approximately 9.15 this morning, uh, there was some kind of an altercation that started out in the parking lot um, outside of the Champion Center, where uh, one of the people involved in that did brandish a, a sharp weapon and uh, was menacing with it. At some point, that went inside. We don't know at what point yet and uh, we received several calls and that's when we responded. It was a joint effort between the CU Boulder Police Department and the Boulder Police Department and uh, they were able to track the uh, person down who had the weapon. He was not uh, following commands and so at some point we did have to uh, neutralize and or, sorry, uh, just limit the situation so that the threat was no longer there. Um, so we don't know yet um, anything other than we know that the, the suspect is dead. Um, it, it is an ongoing situation. We've now turned it over to the Boulder County investigative team since it was an officer involved shooting to continue this investigation. Um, and and uh, at this point, I'll turn it back over to Ryan. We'll take questions after that. I just have a, a quick statement I want to read from Rick George. He's the athletic director. Uh, as you know, the, the, uh, the Champion Center is, is the home to the athletic department, a lot of the administrative offices. Uh, uh, Rick George uh, says the following, regarding the incident this morning in our Champion Center, first and foremost, all our student athletes and staff are safe. We have safety protocols in place, and when everyone received the campus alert, all responded accordingly and the protocols were effective. I want to recognize the Boulder and CU Police Departments for their prompt and swift response to this incident and neutralizing the suspect. Their quick actions allowed for this situation to, to end without further incident. Uh, so now we will uh, take your questions. Was there any conversation at all between police and the suspect? To turn that over to Scott. Sorry. Uh, yes, there was a, a conversation. I, I don't know if you'd call it truly a conversation, but um, there was a con there was dialogue back and forth asking the, the suspect to put down the weapon, and that person did not comply. Was it CU police officers, Boulder police officers? The contact team was uh, a joint effort between CU and Boulder. Was the suspect affiliated with CU? Uh, you know, we don't know at this time. I think there's, there's a lot of information we're still gathering. Um, as we mentioned, the suspect is deceased. As far as that suspect's name, uh, cause and manner of death, you'll have to ask all that of the, of the Boulder County Coroner's male Office. Or female, Frank? It's male, correct? Male. It's a, a male suspect. Were any other injuries reported? No other injuries. The, uh, the, the suspect uh, was the only person hurt uh, during this incident. Do you and know what's the age? I don't know. I don't have that. No. Was the incident in the parking lot? the altercation just between two people who knew each other uh, was the individual the other individual a person who was being targeted and is there anybody else that would have been in danger 
at this point, we don't know. That's all part of the investigation. We just we just know from initial investigation pieces that um, that's where it started, but we don't know if it if they knew each other or not yet. Any idea what the nature of that altercation was? Not at this time. Okay. Can you talk at all about maybe what happened between the suspect and then as well as police that ultimately led to them having to fire that fatal shot in terms of if he was shouting, coming at police with his machete? Yeah, we don't know that. Um, we just know that he was directed to put the weapon down and refused. And so it was at that time for public safety that we believe the shots were fired. Was non-lethal uh, weaponry, if you will, or non-lethal choices ever thought to be used instead of firing the gun? You know, I, I don't know. That's part of the investigation. Can you describe the weapon that he had? Yeah, it was, I mean, it, it's a, a machete. So, you know, a, a long, uh, sharp object. And, you know, I have to say, I know you all have a lot of questions, and we're almost two hours into this incident. Um, we, you know, still have investigators on scene. They're going to be here the rest of the day. So we'll do our best to answer your questions, but a lot of this detail um, will probably come later today. We will have a press conference this afternoon at 2.30. Um, I'll get you a location soon on that. And uh, any additional information we'll have on our, our Twitter page, that's uh, at CU Boulder and also at CU Boulder Police. Why, so. you know how many text messages and alerts went out to students on the campus and workers? Uh, it was multiple. I don't, I don't have an exact number. One went out uh, really shortly right there after we got the 911 call. Uh, we also uh, sent one out to say uh, continue to take protective actions and then also one that said all clear. Let me just say something um, about, you know, we had some questions. What does protective actions mean? And we have a, a text message system for, you know, about 40,000 people here, students, faculty, and staff. And we don't know where all of those people are. Some of them are in the Champion Center. Uh, some of them are not even on campus. And so we can't give a, a precise uh, direction to them to say shelter in place because maybe if they're on the other side of campus, that's not appropriate. So, you know, what we like to emphasize is, is run, hide, fight. And there's a really uh, educational video out there that says if you're away from the scene, run away from the scene. If you're, if you're near the scene and you feel like you need to, to hide, hide in a, in a locked area. And finally, if, if you come face to face with that person and you have no other alternative, you fight. So run, hide, fight, I think is, is a really important thing to note. But we say take protective actions because we don't know where on campus you might be. Ryan, quick question about the, the two people that were involved in that confrontation or altercation. Did the other individual go into the Champion Center and the, was then followed by the, the armed man? We're, you know, we're still really early into this. I don't think we have, have those details. You know, perhaps at the afternoon press conference we, we might have more. Is it a key card entry into that building? Not, uh, not into the, the lobby area to get to the elevators and such. If you want to get into the offices, uh, it is key card on the upper floors. When you said went inside, do you, you mean inside the garage area, not inside? I'm going to uh, refer area. that one to Scott. Again, this is we're still early into this, but our belief at this point is inside the lobby area. Um, the, the parking garage is adjacent to it. So, but that may change as, as the investigation continues. So, it's a healthcare center, is that correct? So, there's the uh, CU Sports Medicine Center in there, but there's also um, offices for the athletic staff. Okay, any other questions? Again, our next briefing will be at 2.30. Uh, please check our uh, Twitter page for that location, uh, and we hope to have more information at that time. Thank Ryan, you. Thank you, and thanks.